We know you have a lot of sucky broadcasts to choose from. So thank you for listening to this sucky broadcast. And now, here's Bradley Laborman. I thought I turned that thing off. How come that thing's not going away? Oh, because I clicked the wrong one. Hi, everybody. I couldn't figure out why that thing wasn't going away. I'm sorry for that. I, I'm sorry for that. I apologize for that. Hi there, everybody. Welcome to this sucky broadcast. It is uh, something Wednesday, the Wednesday, March 13th. Man, I've been doing this thing forever, and I just got to tell you guys, it has been quite the ride. I've been taking every other week off. We're not going to be doing that anymore. We've got a lot of weeks booked up, a lot of different people coming in to the mix that I've been uh, that I've been booking, that I've been planning on having on the show, and I think it's because I'm a lot more motivated. I want to talk to you guys about Magic Mind real quick because I know you, you guys are going to be like, What's he doing? Is this going to be an advertisement? This is not an advertisement. I swear to you, what is an advertisement in a way? But I have been taking Magic Mind. It is a concoction. It is made up of so many amazing things. The number one thing, the thing that I'm like the most involved in, the thing that I'm most in, in, involved in is the uh, lions, the lions, organic lions made mushrooms. Now, I'm all about mushrooms. Pretty much every single thing that I'm taking now has mushrooms in it. I have I have added mushrooms to my daily routine, my daily diet. Uh, it's all about nootropics. It's all about all that stuff. Uh, there's also this thing called Barcopa Moniero, and that helps with uh, attention, cognitive thinking, and stuff like that. I have taken coffee out of my diet. I have taken coffee out of my diet, and I have replaced it with one of these daily, and I feel more – I got more clarity – I got all that good stuff. And I got to tell you, there is a promo right now. If you go to magicmind.com slash Bradman and you use the coupon code Bradman20, you are going to get uh, 20% off your first order and 56% off your subscription. That's what I've been told by the people over at Magic Mind. So I want you guys to be aware that it's an incredible product. It's it's fantastic. And it really has. It's just my clarity and my motivation, my mood, it's all changed. And I there's a lot of things involved. I'm eating healthier. I've lost some weight. I've got my type 2 diabetes under control. I have cut a lot of toxic people out of my life. There's a lot of things involved in this. But I'm going to, to say right now, Magic Mind, taking daily shots of Magic Mind, has been part of that mix has been has been part of that and i just want you to you know boost your mind be, be, join me and boost your mind there's nothing wrong with mushrooms don't don't let don't let the last of us scare you into not letting muddy, mushrooms in your body because i know the whole plot of that movie is that mushrooms take over people's bodies don't let that scare you this is good lion's made mushrooms are good i just want I, that's it magicmind.com slash bradman coupon code bradman 20 hi we have a very awesome guest today. I love this guy. And I met this guy a long time ago in my when I was doing television in uh in New York City. I was working on a project a TV project in New York City early I jumped for you days and uh we had a mutual friend and we met and we had some good times. In fact, I believe the first time we really hung out, really really hung out was we went to a Twitch party. Believe it or no no no. I uh What's it, what's it called? Hold on. Tumblr. Tumblr. We went to a Tumblr party. That's That that dates it right there. Tumblr doesn't even really exist anymore, I don't think so. Anyways, I want to welcome him to the stage right now. Please welcome my friend. I consider him my friend. Jeffrey Gurian, everybody. Hey. And, hey, what is up with you? Hello. Hey, Brad. How are you, man? Great to see you. Uh, great, great to see you. Great to see you. Yeah, amazing. And yeah, that was a long time ago. We did a video. To, we did a comedy video together. I was trying to uh, find that the other day. I was trying to find that the other day with Laura and Francesca. Yep, yep. The the, uh, the YouTube goddess. Yeah, the goddess yes. of comedy, right? The yes, goddess yes. Of comedy. Yeah, I think she's got like two billion views on YouTube. Crazy, crazy yep. numbers, crazy numbers. But that was so fun. 
that we got to do that together. Oh, definitely. That was a great time. And like I said, I was trying to look for that the other day. I was yeah, it's look, somewhere. I, I think it's probably, I, I have it on my channel somewhere, I'm pretty sure, on Comedy Matters TV, on my oh, YouTube. Oh, I think, I think I didn't scroll far enough down. And I, I need to go look for it again. Because I was trying, yeah, to, sure I was trying to explain it to somebody, and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to send you the link. And then I went to go look for the link, and I started watching your other stuff on Comedy Matters TV. And I totally spaced off because I was watching other stuff that you did. So. There's a lot of stuff on. I have more than 600 videos, so you yeah. can you can easily get lost on there. Everybody in comedy, from Jimmy Fallon on down, is on. And that's and it's just incredible. And when you run into them and you talk to them, and they're like, "Hey, Jeffrey, what's up?" And it's just and it's great. And I that's why I wanted you on because I was in fact that's what made me go. You know what? I haven't talked to him in a while. I'm gonna message him, and it was because I was watching some of these other videos, and I was like, I need to have Jeffrey on. It's been a while. I'm so glad you made that choice. It's great to catch up. It, but it, it really is. So t tell everybody how you got started doing what you're doing. Well, um, <laughs> it's a very long story. I think we'll need more than an hour. But uh, <laughs> when I was, tw it started when I was 12, Brad. I, I you know, I have a, a kind of an eclectic background, and they often refer to me as a Renaissance man because I do a lot of stuff. Uh, when I was 12 years old, I decided I wanted to be a doctor, but I was too sensitive to become a medical doctor because I already, I was a very sensitive child and I knew I couldn't handle life and death situations. At that young age, I already knew that. And I was already into energy and stuff and, uh, and I was wearing braces at the time and I said, you know what, I'll be a dentist and I'll make people have beautiful smiles and I was already writing comedy. And my whole life has been that split. So while I was a dentist, while I was in practice, I was a cosmetic specialist. And then I was a clinical professor at NYU for 12 years in oral medicine and orofacial pain. And my specialty was taking away headaches just using energy from your hands, which I lecture on now to the doctors at different universities. Uh, but while I was doing that, I was writing comedy for Rodney Dangerfield and Joan Rivers and Gilbert Gottfried and Andrew Dice Clay and Richard Belzer. And I was the main writer for the Friars Club for 12 years. I wrote uh, a lot of the material for the Friars Roasts. So it was a crazy life because during the day I was doing teeth and then at night I was in the comedy world. Making and, people show their teeth laughing and smiling. Not, yes. <laughs> exactly. That, that, Cindy Adams once wrote about that. She said she figured out the connection. I make people laugh to see if they have any teeth missing. And that, <laughs> That's great. And that, was, uh, and that was it, you know? So it's been that way all along. And then uh, when I, I did a, a book with Chris Rock on the history of the legendary comedy club, The Comic Strip, mm -hmm. where he was discovered by Eddie Murphy in 1985. So I got to interview Seinfeld and Colin Quinn and Susie Essman and all the big stars that came out of that club. And that's when I left to dedicate myself more towards comedy. And that's what I've been doing ever since. I have eight books now, you know, five on comedy and three on happiness, which has allowed me to become a motivational speaker. And I'm sure we'll get into that. But yes. so I... I I wound up doing a lot of things, radio personality. I was on Sirius XM for a couple of years with Ron Bennington and bringing on big stars in comedy that were friends of mine, like Trevor Noah and Kevin Hart and D.L. Hughley and um, just a very long list, Nick Kroll and John Mulaney, you know, so uh, it's been it's been quite a ride. It has. I and I and I do. I see I see you with all these people and. It's it's so inspiring to me, and I'm like, I, at some point, I will get to Jeffrey's status. Someday, I will be at Jeffrey's status. I just need to get back out there and start doing it again. But it's yeah, it's just the the people that you meet and the influence that I see you have is just incredible. And and this past year, we lost so many people. We just lost Richard Lewis, who was a dear yeah. friend of mine for many years, and Gilbert Gottfried, and Bob Saget all good friends of mine, all gone within a year. It's just, it's it's been crazy. So that's why people have to be grateful for every day, you know, when you have yeah. your health. It's so great that you got your diabetes under control. 
I did. Mm-hmm. I, I, I am. If you would have talked, like, I didn't really even do the show last year. I kind of, like, laid off of podcasting and laid off of everything and kind of just sat around and was a, a bump on the log and uh, got motivated at the beginning of the year, started doing a daily vlog. And because my 50th birthday is coming up and my 50th birthday is on September 24th, 924. And this year is 924. So se- September 2024. So 924, 24. That's a number. That's I, and it's all, I'm all about numbers. Me too. I mean, I'm yeah, about numbers too, always. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, 50th birthday is like an iconic birthday. I'm going to have a big party. I'll, I'll make sure you're invited. It's going to be in Dallas. So you might come down here. All right. But, <laughs> but well, maybe I, maybe I could do Joe Rogan's podcast while I'm down there. We'll see. That would, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. Uh, and then you get him to do my podcast. That would be even more awesome. Too. <laughs> but uh, but seriously, I uh, I just you know I just wanted to make a, my life a little bit better, and I'm 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 on the upswing, and um, just uh, the people that I talk to uh, have been motivation for me. I had uh, some great musicians on last week. Uh, that we're talking about the country music scene that was incredible. I've had, I've just had a lot of great guests on, and, th- and I thought Jeffrey Gurian would be an incredible guest to have on the show. Well, that's great so motivation. nice. I just want to say a lot of people don't realize how serious diabetes can be. So it's so wonderful that you're getting it under control. It t- it took down my dad, and I had such an interesting story. You know, very often it affects your circulation. And yes. when my dad was in the hospital, they told me that they were going to have to amputate his leg. And I, I, I wouldn't accept that because they said he lost the circulation in his leg. And I started doing healing work on him. I, I've been doing it since I was a child. When I was six or seven years old, I already knew that I could take away certain pain with my hands. And I used it all my life. And when I was in practice, I dedicated it mostly to people having what they thought were migraine headaches that really come from stress, from clenching and grinding your teeth, which is called bruxism, it causes a lot of physical body pain and it causes headaches that people think are migraine headaches, but they're really not. They're musculoskeletal headaches. So I worked on my dad for a couple of weeks and we were able to save his leg. The circulation came back in his leg and they only had to remove his little toe instead of his whole leg. And I asked the surgeon, if he would co-author an article with me that the energy work helped. And he said he couldn't do it because he didn't believe in that. He no, said, I, I, yeah, he said, I can't explain why the circulation came back. He said, I'll give you a letter stating that the circulation came back. And I don't know why, but I can't contribute to that because I don't believe in it. I said, it's really a shame because you see the proof in front of you. Yeah. You know? But it, yep. it's, but, but, and you know, one of my daughters, where her specialty is treating diabetic patients. She's the head of nutrition at the Scarsdale Medical Center. And she helps people lose weight. Some of her patients have lost 100 pounds. And she does this pump training that allows people to administer insulin to themselves when they need it. And so it's interesting that my family is involved in diabetes. Right, uh, right. You know? But I, anyway. yeah, I, I have a thing on my arm. It's incredible. But I, I mean, and that's the thing is like I, I to, to end this, the topic of diabetes is that my um, what happened was when I was in Chicago, I was getting treated and I was like, I'm going to change this. And this is the deal, Jeffrey. I was watching a long time ago. I watched an episode of King of the Hill. <laughs> you remember that cartoon, King of the Hill? Yeah, and, sure. And there was a, char- a character named Bell and he got diabetes. He lost his he couldn't use his legs. And he joined this uh, basketball team, and then through the process, he started doing exercise, losing weight, and then all of a sudden, his leg, his legs came back, and he could use them again, and because he had overcome the and got the diabetes under control. And I said, I know you can do it because I saw it on a cartoon, and I want to do it. And the doctor's like, No, we can't do it. And this doctor, the doctor that I have now in Arlington, Texas, is like, Yes, we can, and we're going to make this happen. And he has been working with me, and he's been very positive, and I just love him, and I'm just glad that, I, and I'm just moving in the right direction. So. The point, the point of my story was to commend you for doing that because I, ad, I always admire people that overcome obstacles. I was yeah. a very severe stutterer. I started stuttering when I was about seven years old through my 20s and beyond. I, and I stuttered so badly I couldn't even say my name. I could never say Gurian. And I was determined not to go through my whole life as a stutterer because no one was able to help me. 
And I realized one day that I didn't stutter when I was alone. I only stuttered when I was trying to talk to somebody else, which told me you can't have a disability based on your location. Yeah. By what, by what room you're in. A man with a limp limps in every room of his house. He can't go into a room by himself and walk perfectly. But if right. I could speak better when I was alone, theoretically, it means there's nothing wrong with me. So it took me years to cure myself. And now as an avocation, I work with stutterers all over the world and I teach them my techniques. And as you can see, not only don't I stutter, but you can't even shut me up. I talk a lot. <laughs> that's what I love about you. That's what I, I love not, about you. you know, that's, that's funny because a long time ago we did, because we you were talking about Lauren, and we did a, a video series, an idea that I come up with called, because Lauren would dress up like Lady Gaga. So I did right. this whole thing where it was like, during the Oscars, I thought, let's do something that, that'll be trending because the Oscars will be trending. And I said, let's have Lady Gaga be in all the different Oscar nominated films. And one of them was the King's speech. And we did it, the Queen's speech. And that's about somebody stuttering. And that's funny because you were the, you were the coach in that. It was, so you were actually like doing the role that you already knew. That was, that was fantastic. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yes. Well, I'm always grateful to talk about that because people need to know the same way that this doctor said you could definitely do this, people need to know that you can get better from stuttering and you oh, don't yeah. have to go that way for your whole life. And they're not teaching that. They're yeah. teaching people to accept their stuttering, which is only for things you can't change. Yeah. And, you know, uh, it's very important that people know because it really impacts your life if you can't speak. And now I use my voice in everything that I do. Yes. And I think, I think of it every day, Brad. Yes. I'm grateful yes. every day that I don't stutter anymore. Yes. So, so um, you were talking about um, Kevin Hart, all these different people. Where did like so? What era, Where did you meet these? I know you said that you you worked in the Friars Club and you wrote for the the, the Friars Club. Is that where you met a lot of these individuals that you uh, have worked with? You know, it's funny. I started out not knowing one person in show business. My grandfather owned a nightclub, and I, as a kid. All our family functions were held in that nightclub. And I think that gave me an interest in show business. But I always had a feeling that I, I needed to do something. And, you know, I grew up in a very middle class family in the Bronx. You know, there wasn't a lot to do. Like the main attraction, we looked out the window. <laughs> right. <laughs> For entertainment, we looked right. out the window. That was about it. So... I don't know. People always say, how did you meet all these people? Because in the videos that they do about me, like people like Paul Provenza or Nick Kroll say, Jeffrey, you know everybody in comedy and they know you. You can't be in comedy if you don't know me. And I, I can't really give you an answer how it happened. I don't know. It, it was my path. I was put in places where I got to meet people and it just mushroomed. I, I, yeah. I, I don't really even have an answer. But I was always in places where I got to meet people, and I was always in awe. You know, I have walls of pictures. I never collected one autograph in my life. Well, maybe when I was a little kid I did. Right, but as, right. But as an adult, no, because it wasn't about that. I have pictures because I never, I never expected to know any of these people, Brad. I grew up, you know, if you remember Milton Berle. Yes. You remember the name Milton Burrow. Milton yeah. Burrow was my sponsor in the Friars Club. That's what an honor that was to me. Mr. Oh Taylor. my gosh. Oh my gosh. And I got to write for Jerry Lewis and I got to know Henry Youngman and all the great Sid Caesar, all the greats from the golden age of comedy. Woody Allen himself read my earliest material and encouraged me to make films out of it. And so I've gotten to work with so many legends that I never thought I would know. And I don't even, I honestly, I would tell you, I don't know how it happened. I was just in places where I would meet them. We would get along. And, you know, in the early days, I would introduce myself, which you can't do anymore. You can't show up at clubs and introduce yourself because it's a crazy world and people are not looking to meet strangers. But yeah, in those, yeah. it was a much kinder world. And I would show up and introduce myself as a comedy writer and I would ask if I could write for them for free in the beginning just to prove myself, you know, and because I always believed in that. Anybody, you know, when when people are very famous, they could hire any writer they want. They have all the money in the world. 
So why should they choose me? So I was always willing to work for free to, to prove to them that I was worthwhile to work with. That's and great. I got, and I got to work with some of the biggest stars, you know? That's great. And, that, that's incredible. That's incredible. And, and I liked what you said about, because that's been my philosophy too. Because I, I I mean, like I said, I feel like I'm on I'm on this Jeffrey Gurian trajectory that I've tried to do my entire life. And that I have had the opportunity. And I've met a lot of a lot of interesting and amazing people and become friends with a lot of amazing people. And one thing I decided early on was I was never going to ask for autographs because there were plenty of situations when I first started doing the, the breakup website and I was doing the TV show that I'd be on like the Today Show and there'd be somebody else in the other makeup chair. And I could have been like, can I get your autograph, whatever. And I just wanted to treat everybody like normal people. And I think that's why when you say you got along with people and you're friends with people, I think that's been the same thing with me is when you just treat them like normal people and you don't put them up on this pedestal and ask for their autograph and, and, and obsess about them, then they, they feel like you, they can just talk to you like, like you're a friend and they can get to know you. And, and I love that. It's an energy thing, Brad. Yeah. It's yeah. People often say when they see my videos on YouTube, they say, everybody's happy to see you. They always hug you and stuff. And, you know, there's a thing about making people comfortable. First of all, I never, ever, like, I, I've been covering the comedy scene for more than 20 years as a comedy journalist. I have a Comedy Matters vlog. I never write anything bad about anybody because I respect everybody that performs. So if they have a bad show, I just leave it out. I don't write about it. I don't look, I don't look for gossip. I don't look to put people in awkward situations. I don't like mean-spirited comedy. I, I like to be supportive of people. Like Jerry Seinfeld, when he did his Netflix special, he was doing two specials. I think they were paying him like $100 million. Mm -hmm. And he was doing his special at the comic strip, which is where he started. He spent the first four years of his career there from 1976 to 1980 before he went to L.A., and he didn't want people to know. And so his best friend is George Wallace. And when Jerry wants to work out new material, he goes to Gotham Comedy Club on 23rd Street. Chris Mazzilli is the owner, who's a very dear friend of Jerry's. They're both car collectors. And they have a lot of mutual interests. So I was there with George, sitting with George, watching Jerry do his, uh, his set. And Jerry said to me, please don't tell anybody that I'm going to do my special at the comic strip. I want to keep it a secret. Now, it would have been a great thing for yeah. me if I had posted that. It would have been a real scoop. But yes, I, don't, yes. I don't do things like that. I kept yeah. it a secret for three months. And he was very appreciative. He thanked me for it because why would I jeopardize a friendship just to get a scoop? I don't need that. It's not, I'm, I'm not that kind of a person. And, you know, there are a lot of people who, who are willing to print things that will hurt you or ruin your life just to get their name in the paper, you know? So they Been say, there. That, <laughs> Been there. They Been say there. That, that, that people trust me and that's why they talk to me like uh, because we're friends. Most yeah. of the people I know in comedy, when I do a red carpet, I know them all. So they all stop off to talk to me. With Kevin Hart, I produced a, a, a benefit for Haiti after the earthquake mm -hmm. and Kevin, Kevin was the star. His career was just blowing up, and we did it at Westbury Theater, and 3,000 people came out to support. Tony Rock was the feature, Chris Rock's brother, okay. and one of his brothers, and a comedian named Will Sylvins, who's a legitimate Haitian comedian. There were so few Haitian comedians, they tried to do a Haitian comedy festival, and the opening comedian was white. That's how, <laughs> few, that's how few Haitian comedians there were, but yeah. I just met I just met another one. <laughs> <laughs> so so I've gotten to work with people that were legends that I was so excited to meet that I never thought I would know. And so I have hundreds and hundreds of photos all over. When I did the book with Chris Rock, the owner of the comic strip came to my house to interview me. And he said, man, he said, I think you have more pictures than I have in the club. He goes, I think you're the guy to do the book. Yeah, that's awesome. And that, came about that is that is great i i uh i have you ever have you ever uh because you've worked in comedy clubs you've worked with people have you ever thought of just having your own comedy club 
Yeah, somebody just recently asked me about that. It's a lot of pressure to run a comedy club. I thought I, w I wouldn't mind being a partner in a comedy club. Oh, well, then we should talk because I've been I'm working on one too. That's, that's yeah, but it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. You know, I've, I've produced shows. I've produced a lot of shows, and I get great comedians to perform with me because I'm out. You know, my theme song is "Jump Around" by House of Pain because that's what yeah. I do. I jump around to all the comedy clubs, and I'm always looking for new talent. I just found one the other night, a Chinese comedian named Peng Dang, who is opening. Do you know who Joying Summers is? No, I don't. I don't. She's a beautiful Chinese comedian from L.A. whose career has blown up, and she's touring the country. And she was just in New York again, and I was with her. Uh, she, When I first met her about a year or so ago, she came to my house for us to do a video together, and we've become friends. And I, I she's just amazing. She's yeah. got a great Chinese accent, and... So she did a she had a sold out show at New York Comedy Club and I went down because that's also one of my favorite clubs and I found this guy Peng Dang and I'm going to use him in one of my upcoming shows. I that's what I like to do. I go around and I find people and I don't know when I'm going to use them, yes. but I take I take their information and I say you're going to hear from me. Like I uh, right now I have a pilot being edited for TV called The Raw Side of Comedy. Okay. We shot, we shot it this past August. It's a competition slash reality show. So hundreds of comedians applied. We narrowed it down to 30. We brought them to Gotham Comedy Club in August, August 16th. And then I had to narrow it down. I was the host of the show, but also one of the judges. We had the Buckwald Agency and a comedian named uh, Charles McGee. Uh, Charles McBee, I'm sorry, and uh, from from Charlemagne show, and uh, we narrowed it down to ten comics, and then we put them in an Airbnb. They didn't know we were going to do that. <laughs> we, put, we we put them on a bus and took them to Brooklyn to an Airbnb where they're going to have to live together. But it's a show that shows how hard it is to make it in the comedy world. People have no idea the sacrifices that you have to make to make it as a comedian. And I think that's that's very that's very true because when you watch like Seinfeld, it's it's still like him like trying to make it in in the in the reality because it's based on him trying to make it or whatever. But he's not struggling per se. There's the, like he's he's got a nice apartment and he's got good friends and he's going out all the time. And I'm like, that's not how it is when you start out in comedy at all. So. Some of the comics that w that we had, a couple of them were homeless. One lived in his car for a few months. One, one, one wound up in prison is now a security guard. Uh, a lot of them had very compelling stories, very difficult stories. But speaking of Seinfeld, why do you think his last name sounds so perfect for a television show? What if it was Laborman and people say, hey, did you see Laborman last night? You know, like, you know what made me think of that? The guy who invented the Glock just died recently. Yeah, yeah. When I read about it, he was 94 years old. His name was Gaston Glock. And I'm like, how come his last name sounds so perfect for a gun? Right, like, right. My last name would not sound good for a gun. Like, he pulled a gurion on me. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> he, had a, he had a fully loaded gurion on him when he yes, got arrested. Yes. I think that, my last name sounds great for comedy. I think, that's, I think it's a good last name for comedy, I think. It could. I, Actually, yeah. when, you say, when you say, yeah, did you watch Laborman recently? Yeah. yeah, I could see that. I could see that, but not Schwartz Vance. <laughs> right? Is that what? Is that what? Is that what? Is that what somebody's name, was? somebody's name is Schwartz Vance? That's right, not right. For a TV show? Oh, not at all. Not at all. So, <laughs> De definitely, definitely not. Um, so, it, are there? But there's. I know you don't talk bad about anybody, so I'm not going to even ask you if there's any comedians. You don't like. I won't. I won't even go down that path because you don't talk bad about anybody. But no, me I, on the other hand, I get along. I get along with everyone. I go through life. My motto is: I love everyone until they teach me not to. Yeah, you true. know. That's how I started writing books on happiness. You know, I have eight books. So my last three books were on happiness, mindset, and changing negative thinking to positive thinking. 
And it, that's what helped me survive a widow make a heart attack and a hospitalization with COVID double pneumonia. I was going to ask you, because the last time I talked to you to see if you were okay, when, when I, when the last time you were on my show was the widow make your heart, heart attack when we, when we met over at that bar in Long Island city. Oh yeah. Just, right. That was, yeah. That was 2015. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. I saw you, I, I, and I even checked in on you because I saw you on Instagram and you were in the hospital and I was like, hello, my friend, is everything okay? I, was, I checked in on you because I was, I was concerned, but yeah, I, I was going to ask you about that too. Well, I was very lucky, Brad. Yeah. I, I, both times, you know, after I had the heart attack, I was back on stage five days later and the owner of the comedy club said to me, what are you crazy? You just had a heart attack. And I was like, yeah, but it's hard to get a spot here. I don't want to lose my spot. <laughs> and he said, only a comedian would think that way. Right, right. That's great. That's, that's great. That's what led me to writing my first book. And if you don't mind, I'm going to show it. No, go ahead. Yes. Well, Healing Your Heart. Tell me if you can see it. Healing Your Heart by Changing Your Mind. And it's got a meditating dog on the cover, which is so hard to get a dog to sit in lotus position. But right. It's called Healing Your Heart by Changing Your Mind, a spiritual and humorous approach to achieving happiness. And it's not about heart disease. It's about since, since you're a child, every time someone hurt your feelings or broke a promise to you or hurt you in some way or broke up with you in a relationship, that stays lodged inside of you in your heart chakra. And I call them heart wounds. And okay. they affect they affect our self-esteem and our self-confidence, and they affect every decision you make in your life. They cause you to have thoughts that are not valid about yourself, and most of them are negative thoughts. If you were ever bullied as a child, which a lot of people were, you don't want to believe the mean things that people said about you, but on some level, you hold on to those thoughts, and they affect everything you do. Every time in your life you have to make a decision you think about what to do. Brad, are you, are you still there? Okay. Oh, so, no, I'm here. I'm, no, I was looking at your book. I was, I was, I was, I was looking at your book on the, on the website, too. So. Oh, so, so every time you're called upon to make a decision, you think about what to do. You use your thoughts. And if some of your thoughts are not valid, your decisions are not going to work out for you. It's mm -hmm. why people, they find the same patterns in their life, the same bad job over and over again, the same bad relationship over and over again. And the only common denominator is you. You're the person who keeps reappearing. So it can't only be the other people that are wrong. Something You have to change something in yourself. And that's why it's called healing your heart by changing your mind. Because you literally have to change all your thoughts. You know, you already know your thoughts. That's, right? inc that's insane that you said that because that's literally my philosophy in life is ever since I've been doing the breakup website, when I was doing the breakups and I was calling people and breaking up with them and stuff like that, I was like, when you say you attract the wrong people and that people turn into jerks when you're around them or whatever, that, no, the common denominator is always going to be you. No, you always, it? always control the, can control the situation. So you have and, to look at yourself. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. And that, no, I, I'm totally on the same page. And that was what happened to me at the beginning of the, like the end of last year. I said, the only person that's going to change my life and make my life better is me. And I need to stop blaming everybody else for my problems and keep and stop relying on everybody else to help me with my problems. I need to handle this on my own and, and, and be positive and move forward because every single time I've had a problem or a, made a bad decision, it was me making the bad decision. I was I was the common denominator. So incredible. I put your I put your book in my cart. That's what I was that's what I was doing when you uh, said oh, are you there? I was, I was Thank you so much. Well, that that's what led to my second book, which is called Fight the Fear: Overcoming Obstacles That Stand in Your Way. Because I've been battling fear all my life, and mm -hmm. I don't know why. I, I I had a very loving and supportive family, but I grew up with a lot of fears. And my fears told me that I wouldn't accomplish anything, that I wouldn't have the things that other people took for granted. Mm -hmm. I thought I'd never be successful, that I'd never be married or have children or have a house. I thought I wouldn't even have an apartment. And I don't know where that kind of negative thinking came from, but it affected me in so many ways. And I think that my stuttering was tied in with that. 
And I, I, I wound up having all the things that I feared that I would never get, but I didn't do them comfortably. So I challenge myself on a daily basis, which is what I tell people to do when I lecture on this stuff. And as an example, in 2019, I made myself go to Japan all by myself. It was the scariest thing I could think of to do because wow. traveling is very hard for me. I get lost wherever I go. I'm not, I'm not a great flyer. And I've always been fascinated by Japanese culture. I'm not sure why. I joined the Japan Society. I, I learned some Japanese. I did it three times because two years in a row, a friend was supposed to go with me. And two years in a row, he copped out at the last minute. So the third year, I said, you know what? I'm not waiting for anybody anymore. I'm going alone. Because if you wait for somebody to do something with you, there's a good chance you'll never do it. So I, yeah. went, I went by myself. I was lost every day in Japan. It's a very hard country to navigate on the subway. They lie and they tell you everybody speaks English. It's not true. Only in the <laughs> hotels. Only in the hotels. It's a very complicated subway system. The first day I was there, I couldn't get out of the subway for an hour because it's not enough to know what stop to get off. When you get off, every subway stop has 18 to 20 different exits. And every exit takes you to a different part of the city. And there was nobody that spoke English, so I didn't know where to go. And I was wandering for an hour underground. <laughs> it, it was crazy. But you know what? I wound up doing two comedy shows while I was there. I went from Tokyo to Kyoto to Osaka. And I accomplished everything that I wanted to do. And I proved to myself that I could do it. And just last week, I was in a shopping mall in White Plains. And I was nervous that I was going to get lost. And I had to remind myself, Jeffrey, you went to Japan alone. You can't right. get, you can't, you're not going to get lost in White Plains in a shopping mall. You'll find your way out. But it's very important to remind yourself of things right. to help you overcome fear. Because so many people battle fear. And your fears are the ones that tell you that you'll never be successful, that something is going to stand in your way, that you're not going to achieve your goals. And yeah. it's all lies, Brad. They're oh, yeah. all lies. And you, you're, you're literally arguing with your subconscious mind. And you have to learn to ignore your own mind, which is what I do when I, when I, when I teach people how not to stutter. Yeah. Uh, it comes from your subconscious mind. You have to learn to ignore those negative thoughts. So that's what you did. If you spent a year not doing anything and then you got your strength up, you encouraged yourself. Yeah. And, and I, I always admire people who do that. Some people stay in a depressed state for years. And sometimes you just have to grab yourself by the bootstraps. Oh, I you think it was I think it was years. I think I was I now that I look back on it, I'm pretty sure that the entire like as soon as I moved out of Los Angeles, because Los Angeles was being kind of toxic. I was heading back to New York City. I was like, I love New York City. I want to go back to New York City. My brother convinced me to move to Chicago. So I'd be closer to family. So I moved to Chicago to be closer to family. It didn't really convince me. It was just, oh, family's here and I want to be there. And I was still kind of bummed and depressed. And then COVID hit, which wasn't fun in Chicago either oh, yeah. at, at all. And then about six months into that, my brother got a job in uh, 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 Louisville. Because he, he does Dave and Buster, so he he went ended up going to Louisville, and they moved him right away, and he didn't want to tell me because he had just he, like I he had like it's said it would be great to move yeah yeah right right and so I was kind of in Chicago by myself, and I I don't know if you know this about me I like to move around a lot I like to when I I I the one thing I am good at is like when I want to move I just move because I don't let anything hold me back I try to be very nomadic, and I I went out to. LA for a road trip to promote my movie, Brad Man the Movie, which is available now on Tubi, everybody. I'm just going to promote my movie that's out on Tubi right sure, now. Of course. And, and uh, on the way back, we drove through Texas and the Panhandle. And I was like, this is really, you know, this is really nice. I think I want, someday I want to live in Texas. Got back to my apartment in Chicago and there was a note because my landlord had decided they were not going to renew my lease. And I was like, oh, then I'm moving to Texas. 
And wow. I just decided I just decided to move to Texas. I drove, I do Uber and Lyft on the side. So I'm like, I'm just gonna drive Lyft straight for a couple of weeks to build up enough money to get there. And in the process of doing that, I met a bunch of people from Dallas Fort Worth area. And I said, This is a I like one week on one weekend, I met 14 people from Dallas Fort Worth. And I'm like, wow. there we go. That's a sign. That's, That's I'm all about sign. signs. Oh, I'm all about sure. signs. And yeah, then my not. my landlord reached out and said, I'm going to start showing the place on Valentine's Day last year. And I said, oh, I'm going to probably be in Texas to look for apartments at that time. So that might be weird. And he goes, and they basically said, if you move out now, we will cut your, we'll just end your lease and everything will be good. And I was like, cool. I took my rent money that I was going to spend and got a hotel room and found a place to live a month later down here. So, wow. Yeah. You know, that's such a courageous thing. I can't, I can't do that kind of stuff. I'm not built that way, but I always admire people that can just pick up and move. Yes, but I I've never been out of the country ever. I've never been out of, the, and I. This is the year I'm, I'm going to need a passport because I've never been out of the country in my life. Yeah, I did that. I went to France. I had some films and uh, some short films in the Cannes Film Festival. So I went oh, to wow. that. I went by myself again. I went to Spain and Italy, and you know I study the language before I go so I can speak when I'm there because. I, it's too frustrating to be in a country and not to be able to communicate and right. people appreciate that. But your story uh, about facing adversity, that's why I wrote my third happiness book. And I'm going to show you that one too. It's called Facing Adversity, Stories of Courage and Inspiration. And they're true stories. I started collecting these stories in 1999, Brad. I've always been fascinated by people who overcome obstacles. My obstacle with stuttering is tiny compared to what's in this book. I'll give you an example. A little three-year-old boy playing hide and seek, and he hides behind a tractor, and the tractor's motor is running, and he puts his hands in it, and it cuts off his hands. And his father, it's horrible, right? His father sees it happen. His father is a surgeon, but not that kind of a surgeon. He, he rushes the little boy to the hospital, and it's a holiday, and there's no transplant surgeon available. So the father assembles a team of people, and he does the surgery himself because he has no choice. And he operates on him for nine hours. And he puts the hands back, and he puts them in casts. When he takes off the cast a few months later, the hands are alive. The transplant took, but the hands are not functional. The grandfather is a martial artist. And he trains that little boy every day growing up to reuse his hands. And today, that little boy became a famous spinal surgeon. And he runs the surgery clinic at a hospital in Colorado. Oh, my now, gosh. That story blew me away. I'm like, it sounds impossible. It's a God story. Right. And, and he was going to become a hand surgeon. But, look, I've done surgery. I was a cosmetic dentist for many years. I know how steady a hand you have to be. To do spinal surgery when your hands were cut off as a child, it's it's unimaginable, unimaginable. And the book is a compilation of all stories like that. A guy was born, and and he's he's a known person now, so I can say his name. He was born with no arms and legs. His name is Nick Vujicic, and I saw him on the Oprah show. No arms and legs, and when he was 10 years old, he tried to commit suicide by slipping under the bath water because he was being bullied so badly. And today, he's an internationally known motivational speaker, and he's married to a beautiful woman, and he has four children. And meanwhile, the, the singles bars are filled with tall, handsome guys with all their limbs. Right, right, yeah. No arms and legs. Yeah. He has a beautiful family, and he makes a living traveling the world as a motivational speaker. So those stories mean so much to me because we tend to feel sorry for ourselves sometimes. Oh, you know? yes. I've got a story for you. Go ahead. I love okay. it. Okay, okay. And you might you might already know this story, but I just learned this story recently, and it just blew my mind. I said, it's, it's, it's kind of a dark story, but here we go. There was a couple, and they're uh, having dinner, and they invite their friend over, and... That these two people are actors and they invite their friend over and they're hanging and they're hanging out and somebody busts through the door this group of men bust through the door and tie them up and um 
proceed to steal everything from the house, everything like that, and um, then have their way with the women, unfortunately. Right. And and they um, capture the guys, or they think they they like what what the deal is that the woman, uh, Francine, this woman Francine, she memorizes the person's face that's doing stuff that's. Mm -hmm. and, well, and so she's able to give a police description and they end up capturing the guy. And when they go to identify the two individuals there, there's a bunch of people there because they basically ransacked several neighborhoods and did this to a lot of people. And they're put away for a very long time. But fast forward, these two actors, this actor and this actress uh, decided to make a TV show together. And the name of the show was The Nanny and Francine is Fran Drescher. Wow, so it's a real story? It's a real story and I just I just learned about it. And you know, and now she's, you know, she's I believe she's president of 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 the Screen Actors Guild, right? Yeah, I'm I, pretty sure she is. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I got to meet her. She hosted uh an episode of Gotham Comedy Live, a TV show, and she was the host and she was mm -hmm. so sweet. She was such a great person. So yeah. that's an amazing story that she overcame something so true. Oh yeah, and I think that's what that, that thing that and the, uh, what I was like reading. I I saw the video and I was I was learning about it, and I saw the comments and all the comments were like, "This is just incredible because you see her now and that she overcame all this." And it's just it's, well, it's you incredible. see, some people, the universe gives everyone obstacles to overcome. Yeah, we're all, we're all being tested, and some people are crushed by their obstacles and they never go on to do anything, and other people find the inner strength to overcome them. Yeah. And I've always been fascinated. So while I was recovering from COVID, I was in the house for months. I didn't go out of the house. And I said, I don't want to waste my time. How can I turn a negative into a positive? And I wrote that third happiness book. And I call them my happiness series. And they all became bestsellers on Amazon because they're inspirational books. They give people hope because the last three years have been very stressful f for people. Yeah. People are really stressed out after going through what we've been through the last three years. The country is in very bad condition. People are very divided and they need a sense of hope. And that's what I want to do. I want to be inspirational to people. And when you, you know, there's, oh, I wonder if I have it. You know, I want to read you this thing. There's a saying that I use and I think it'll be helpful. It's a, it's not long at all, but if okay. you no, that's that. Hey, you're the guest of the show. I want, I do want to tell people, I am going to put a link to every one of Jeffrey's books in the description. And so if you're watching this on the podcast or whatever, you're going to be able to click on it and you're going to be able to, uh, um, you're, you're going to be able to, to download these books and find or order these books. They're also available on uh audio book. I see here. So, yeah, uh, they're all audio books, but they're all available in print on Amazon. So this is called About Fear, and see if you grasp this. It's, a, it's the most powerful statement I've ever read, and I carry it with me every day. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? Your playing small doesn't serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that others won't feel insecure around you. We were born to manifest the glory within us. It's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. That's it. And it's from a book called A Return to Love by Marianne Williamson who I had the honor of doing a radio show with once to help her promote one of her books. Mm -hmm. And what it's really saying is that it's okay to be successful. It's okay to be a superstar. You're not bragging. You're, you're, you become an inspiration to other people. So when I talk about conquering stuttering or anything else that I've been able to accomplish, I'm not saying it to brag to people because I have a lot of weaknesses I have a lot of things that I'm not good at, but mm -hmm. it's very it's very important in terms of self-esteem to honor your strengths. 
to honor what you're good at and to be able to say it honestly. I'm good at this. I'm very bad at other things. I could feel almost stupid at certain things, but I know I'm not stupid, but I don't see things. I have ADHD. I've been diagnosed with it. No medication has ever helped me, but there's nothing enlightened about shrinking, about making yourself less than. When you become successful, when you conquer something, then you become an inspiration to other people who are facing the same obstacle as you. And so that's why it's important to tell people. So it's very rewarding for me when I help stutterers because stuttering is a terrible affliction to live with. It holds you back in so many ways if you feel that you can't express yourself. Yeah. And it's very rewarding to me. I change people's lives when I teach them how not to stutter. And it's about mind control, learning to control your mind, to control your thoughts, getting rid of negativity and embracing positivity. So I just so got- easy. It's so easy for people to be negative. It's a lot easier for it's people so to be negative than to be positive. And that's what I've learned. I'm doing a weekend at Omega Institute. I just got invited September 20th to the 22nd, Omega Institute for Holistic Studies. I don't know if you heard of it. It's a legendary place. All the gurus in, in consciousness all speak there. Oh, wow. And I'm doing a weekend from September 20th to the 22nd called Healing Your Heart Through Humor. And it's a big honor to be asked to be there. And I'll be talking about all these things, about changing your thinking and how I use that to get through the heart attack and the COVID double pneumonia. You know, I was laying in the hospital at, at, in March of 2020 when the original germ was out and people were dying all over the place. Yeah. No one knew what was going to happen. They came to get me with hazmat suits. And the guy, one of the ambulance workers took my hand and he said to me, don't worry, you're going to make it. He said he was amazed that I could get up on the stretcher myself. He said most people needed to be carried. And when they took me to the hospital, they wheeled me into the emergency room. They put me next to a woman who was screaming. And I'm not exaggerating. She was literally screaming with every breath that she took. And I wanted them to move me because I was so sick. And it yeah. was very disturbing hearing that. And then I had to do what I, what I write about in my books because I had to walk the walk, not just talk the talk. So I stepped outside myself and I started thinking about this woman and how scared she must be or how much pain she must be in instead of focusing on myself because the natural thing is to say, Brad, uh, why me? Why is this happening to me? Right. right, right. But the spiritual answer is why not me? Whoever, yeah. whoever promised you that your life is supposed to be perfect with yeah. nothing going wrong. And so once I did that, they were actually going to try to send me home. But once I did that, a pulmonary specialist came and he said, I'm sorry to tell you, you have COVID double pneumonia. We're going to find a room for you. And they cleared out the cancer wing to make room for the COVID patients. It was it was a crazy time. It was. I had a fight to stay positive. That's the the essence of the story is because when you're in a negative space, your immune system doesn't function as well. And when you're in a positive space, your immune system functions much better and you can fight off illness. Yeah. And that's what I had to do. And that's why I write about these things. Because I think it's so important to spread that message. I I I agree. You've inspired me to do some writing too. I think I think I need to be doing some more writing. I <laughs> I, I just published a children's book a couple of weeks ago, and oh, I, I think I do that. That's so great that you oh, did. Yeah. That. I you know what I saw people talking about, and then not gonna lie, I, my dog is sitting over here. He's laying on the bed, and I was looking at him, and I go. Why did why did I use him as the topic for my children's book? So I came up with a whole new series of books using my dog Brody as the as the character, as the main character, and just him like laying around being lazy and stuff like that. And it's just it's 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 such an easy process to I mean it's a lot harder to write a book book, and that's what I that's what I want to do next. But children's book is like you basically write a poem and then you illustrate it and then uh, you make it like twenty pages long or whatever. Well, one thing that I always remember about you, and even Lauren said it, you're very creative. You're always I coming tried. up with ideas. No, and, and, I, and I saw that with, with social media and just in general, very, very creative. And you challenge yourself. I remember how you dressed 
you 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 became a different person for the little films that we did right and it was uh, just very interesting so you have that capacity which is very rare i well i appreciate that compliment and that means a lot coming from you i really that that really does mean a lot for me coming from you so because I, I put you okay. up there on the on the uh, on the pedestal i did want to ask you because you mentioned adhd and you, you you mentioned that and i wanted to, to talk to you because you said have been medicated i'm sort of in the same boat and i think the situation is there was a time I, funny funny story and i that's why i don't even smoke pot or do anything like that either is that i don't like the feeling of not giving a shit and i there was one day my mom had like these samples of like some mental health medicine or whatever like that and it was like some something with a cloud on it the commercial was some cartoon cloud or whatever and she's like i got these low doses this you want to try one i took one of them because i thought to myself oh i must be dealing with depression and all this other stuff and i took that and i hated how i felt because i didn't care about anything and i that's why i've never pursued taking like adhd medicine or any sort of like mental like like to deal with depression i've always just like tried to like work on myself to get through depression and things like that because I, i'm afraid the medication will make me a completely different person yeah and, and, and it, it tends to do that yeah and it's one of the reasons well first of all i don't have luck with those things i've tried many mm -hmm. uh, i was tested for adhd because one of my daughters had it and she was tested and I really wanted to know. A lot of people just say they have it. I went for a multitude of tests and the doctor said to me, he was amazed. He said, I'm amazed that you were able to accomplish everything that you're able to accomplish. I graduated number 54 out of 126 at my dental school. Mm -hmm. and he oh. said, you must have had to work 10 times as hard as everyone else because you face so much confusion. And I tell people that a lot. A lot of stutterers have that too. But I talk about that a lot because it can, it can make you feel dumb. It can make you feel stupid when you're confused. There are certain things that make so much sense to other people and I can't grasp it. It's like when I'm traveling, intellectually I know that if I, had, if I made a right turn to get someplace, when I go back, I have to make a left turn to go back. I, yeah. can't, I can't see that. I can't <laughs> grasp it. And, you know, when I was a cosmetic dentist, I could take people's mouth apart and put it back together again and make yeah. them look beautiful. But I can't do directions for anything. If yeah. someone shows me a map, I feel like an infant. I can't. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. So I've tried every medication right. and none of them work. And you can't tell right away whether they work. They take usually they take a couple of weeks to build yeah. up the system. If you take something and it changes the way you feel right away, that's not the right medication for you. That's like, almost like getting high from something. Right. But these things, they tend to change your blood chemistry and you feel like you're a different person. And I do that on my own. Yeah, I don't need, I don't need that. I don't need chemicals doing it. I know people that are on so many medications and it messes them up because it takes away your personality. Yep. And you're better off without it. If you yeah. can manage the way you are, then that's great. I, you know what, when you said that, it also made me think of the fact that I, I've taught myself how to play instruments and especially during COVID, I taught myself how to play ukulele because I thought ukulele would be a good tool to have. Uh -huh. And, but the thing that I've realized is, and I still can't do this. I can do, I can shoot a video and, and shoot it exactly how i want it and then put it into the computer and edit it no problem because i shot it exactly how i wanted it with every shot in one or two takes and but i can't play an instrument and sing at the same time that's like something like i can't do it i can't i cannot figure out how to like i can play a song on the ukulele i can sing the song but if I, you try to get me to do puff the magic dragon and play it and sing at the same time can't do it for the life of me so isn't that so interesting yeah I'm I was going to say, it's a lot easier to bring a ukulele around than a piano. Yeah, right, right. I play the piano. And during COVID, I started playing every day because, again, I wanted to turn a negative into a positive. I hadn't mm -hmm. played the piano for years. I took lessons for 10 years when I was a kid from 7 to 17. And I have a beautiful white baby grand, and I wasn't playing it. So I played every day. 
and I taught myself to play all the songs that I have on my on my iPhone. And I can, you know, when you play the piano, I didn't even realize this till recently. My daughter said to me, each hand does something else. Yeah. You're playing at the same time that one hand is doing one thing, the other hand is doing something completely different. She said, that's amazing that you can do that. It comes naturally to me. Yeah. You know, it's like when people say, well, how do you write jokes? I don't know. It's like, how do you write songs? It's just a gift that you're given yeah. that it feels comfortable. I'm thinking of funny things all the time, you know, and I guess it's the same for songwriters. They just get a, a like an inspiration, you know. I carry a recorder with me. See, I always carry like a little recorder like this, a little yeah. audio recorder. And when I have an idea, I say it into the recorder or I jot it down so I don't forget it. I've got. Started, I've started doing that with my dreams too. I've started doing that well, a lot more. Yeah. I say I've yeah. gotten out of bed to write down stuff because you think you're going to remember it, but but by the morning you forget it. Yes. So you, you have to write it down right away, yeah. or else it disappears. Yep, exactly, exactly. And and I mean the other thing is, and I got to tell you, uh, everybody always when I drive around and do Uber because I do it because I just I started doing it because I was in a in a movie about an Uber driver and it was for character development. But once I did it, I was like, I love this. I love talking to people and just talking to people about whatever. And today I had a I treat every, I had a political conversation with one person, and I had a a, a conversation about uh, baby goats with another person. It's just like you never know what you're going to talk about. And the other, but the other thing is, I've had so many people just ignore me and talk to each other and just ignore that I'm there, but not realize I'm there. I've come up with so many ideas for TV shows <laughs> and, and sketches because of stuff that I've overheard. Because people are just very free to just like throw out stuff like that, and so I, I've just gained a lot of uh information and knowledge and stuff like that and i've realized even more and i don't know if it's because of the clarity and, and all the other stuff that's been going on i do this thing where i get on TikTok and i play the puzzle games and i see these people like struggling to do like the draw line and not connect the dots and stuff like that uh -huh. and then i'll get i'll go on and do the same thing and do it in like 10 seconds and i, I i'm like i think i need to take an iq test <laughs> I, that, that's where i'm at right now in my life i'm like i've never ever taken an iq test in my life and I think I want to take an IQ test because I think I'm smart, smarter than I think I am. And I, I think it would be nice to know. But at the same time, that I might take it and get, they're like, nope, you're not. But I'm, well, I'm ready. I'll tell you one thing. Your energy is great. I, I, it's been it's a lot different. If you would have saw me a year ago, it's a lot. I'm a lot. I think it's a lot of positivity. And it's yeah. a lot of like I, my, one of my biggest things is I rearrange my apartment all the time because I believe like clean environment, clean, clean mind. That's another thing. I That's fine. Uh, you know what? When I lecture, I tell people, I teach them how to create their own happiness center is what I call it. I had a healing center called the happiness center. And what it involves is that everything in your apartment, wherever you look, should be something that makes you feel good. Not something that brings up a bad memory. Something right. that makes you feel good. The colors should be bright. Like white makes me happy. My carpeting is white. My piano is white. My car is white. I like bright colors. I darkness. People wonder why they're sad. They live in dark apartments, dark colors on the wall. I need brightness. Yeah. So, so I teach people like once you leave the house, you're at the mercy of whatever the universe has in store for you. You have no idea what you're going to encounter. The only place you can control your environment is where you live. So you have to surround yourself with things that make you feel good when you see them. Yeah. Uh, my house is filled with toys. I always have balloons and crayons. You would think that little children live here. <laughs> I do that for me because, like, I was on the cover of this magazine recently. Well, you posted that picture. And, yeah. and uh, the opening line was, my inner child is my best friend. And that's true. I stay connected to my inner child because... When, when you were a little kid and your friends would come to call for you and say, hey, can Brad come out to play and you feel happy, that's not supposed to end just because you grow up. Yeah. You're supposed to still have fun and stay yep. connected to that. And that's how, that's how I lead my life. Yep. That's uh, me. I just started a, I started a bucket list. Not because I'm going to die or anything, but right. because I was like, you know what? By the time I'm 50, I want to accomplish all these things. Like I said to myself, 
I'm going to do a daily vlog every day until my birthday. I'll probably keep doing it because I've, I've been motivated to keep doing it. Sometimes they're short, sometimes they're long, but I'm still doing one every day to let people know I'm doing one. Uh, I, I posted on that I wanted uh, one of my social media posts to go viral, and then it went viral. I wanted my movie to go on to a major streaming platform. It did. I wanted to publish a children's book. I did. And so I've just been putting out these this energy and this manifestation. In fact, TikTok, I need to pick it up my mailbox, but I just got a book about a manifestation journal where I can just write in it every day and uh, and try and, and put my manifestation ideas onto paper. So I'm Wayne, all about manifestation, all that stuff. Wayne Dyer used to talk about that. And I had the honor of doing a radio show with him too about intention. If your intention is strong enough, mm -hmm. you can manifest things, you can bring them into your life. And it may not happen right away. Some right. things happen when they're supposed to. That's one of the things that I've learned. Yeah. As human beings, we, we're impatient. We want things right away. Sometimes it takes time. You can't rush it. But if you're, you have to keep putting out that intention. And, and, sometimes, and sometimes it doesn't come in the form you thought it was going to come in. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It doesn't come in the order you ask. Yeah. He used to say every question you ask will be answered. Every question you ask the universe will be answered, but not always in the order that you ask it. Yes. So again, it, it, it requires patience, which is a difficult concept. My, my new favorite line is from a country Western song from the, the singer Jelly Roll. And if you've heard of Jelly Roll, his story is inspiring. He former drug dealer turned country singer, just incredible individual, but he has a line in one of his songs, and, and I quoted it the other day on my vlog, and his line is, I took the rearview mirror off of this old Ford, so I only look at what's in front of me. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, I love that. I love that phrase. So, I mean, sometimes, yeah, you need to be reminded of the past, but at the same time, it's, it's easier to focus on the future if you don't have anything constantly making you look back. There's a spiritual concept that says it's okay to look back, just don't stare. Yeah. Oh, that's good. You use your past as a guide yeah. for what you don't want to make the same mistakes again, you know, for what you don't want to repeat. You know, you it's it's important to evaluate your past, but not to get stuck there and not to blame yourself. Everybody is living with, I, I could have done this, I should have said that, and that's what leads to mental illness. You yeah. have to stay in the now. Our now is you and I doing this right now. That's our only reality, Brad. You and I yeah. are on the podcast together. Yep. And time flew by. It did. It did. I was going to say, I was I was getting ready to wrap it up. Um, and so my my big question for you is, uh, where can everybody find you? That's that's one of my main questions is, where can everybody find you on social media, on the web? Where do you want, to, where do you want everybody to come look for you? My website is comedymatterstv.com. And if you sign up, if you put your email on there, you'll get a couple of free chapters to the book, Healing Your Heart by Changing Your Mind. Um, for anybody who stutters or who knows somebody who stutters, I have a specific website for that. It's called StopStutteringNowGurian.com, G-U-R-I-A-N, StopStutteringNowGurian.com. On Instagram, I'm at Jeffrey Gurian. On TikTok, at Jeffrey L. Gurian. And uh, my Comedy Matters YouTube channel is youtube.com slash Comedy Matters TV. If you like interviews with famous comedians, you'll see everybody on there. And the other book that I didn't mention, which is one of my favorite books, it's a very silly book called Man Robs Bank with His Chin and Other Unusual Stories Missed by <laughs> Mainstream Media. And it's got blurbs on it from Richard Lewis, who we just lost this week, you know, from right. Curb Your Enthusiasm. Colin Jost, who is the head writer and the, the, the weekend update guy on Saturday Night Live. And Nick Kroll from Kroll Show on Comedy Central. So and I always, I see him talking about you all the time and, and he just loves you. And I, I love that about him. So yeah, that he's been so kind to me. He's really been amazing, Nick Kroll. So uh, that's about it. That's where people can find me. Awesome. Well, Jeffrey, I want to thank you for being my guest today. I want you to thank you for being part of the show. I want you to stick around while I do my outro so I can say goodbye to you properly. Absolutely. But I, I want everybody to follow Jeffrey. I'm going to put all his links and all his information 
up on the website. So please check check him out. Make sure you go. He's just an amazing individual. Amazing individual. And I'm so glad that I can call him my friend and that I've got, got to work with him. And now I really hope that we can work again a couple more times in the future. That's the end of my show, everybody. I hope that you've enjoyed this episode of this sucky broadcast. You can follow, you can find all the old episodes of this sucky broadcast on my website, thissuckybroadcast.com. You can follow me on all my social media, Bradman TV. Uh, I'll put a link to my book, uh, the Atka the, the Liger, which is a children's book. I'll put a link to Bradman the movie, which is available right now on Tubi. So please go check all that stuff out too. And I'll, like I said, I'll put links to all of all of Jeffrey's books as well because I am just uh, I didn't really see that many books. I should know this, and I didn't. And now I, I have a lot of reading to do in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> uh, it's been a wonderful show. I want to thank again. I want to thank Magic Mind, my sponsor, Magic Mind. And uh, I want to make sure that you have a wonderful rest of your week. And if you're listening to this on Rerun, realize you could have watched this live. We do this live every Wednesday at 8 o'clock Central Time. You could have been here and experienced the whole thing. So love you guys and check you out again next week. You've been listening to This Sucky Broadcast. Learn more at thissuckybroadcast.com.